1977, I made a documentary about the Ruttles. The Prefab Four, Dirk, Nasty, Stig and Barry. It made quite a splash. Today, I'm here in Hollywood to take a look back at the Ruttles, to look back on those mop-topping, foot-tapping, happy-go-lucky days of Ruttle mania and ask the question, where are we today? Well, obviously, I'm here in Hollywood. And you're at home or, or at a friend's or at Veronica's or wherever you're watching. But tonight, I want to pose the question, did the Ruttles change the world? Or did the world change with the Ruttles? Or did the Ruttles not change and the world did? Or perhaps we should all go and change now. Tonight, I'm going to be asking deep and probing questions. I shall be using modern interview techniques to harass and badger people whose only fault was that they knew the Ruttles. Indeed, I should be making a documentary that will hopefully bring me a bloody Emmy. Oh, for heaven's sake, come back here. Every time I see you walk by, there's a certain look in your eye And your smile says there's something that I should tell you Every time we meet we say hi How's it going? Fine, we reply But I wonder what would happen if I could tell you I love you Yes, tonight we tell the Ruttle story. The full oh, time. Jesus well, Christ! Oh, I'm sorry, lady. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Uh, you better, you better cut it. Shit I'm sorry. No, no, uh, we should, no. Seriously, we, we're just doing a documentary with oh, the baby. Okay. This man right here? Yes, this man right here. Yeah, you crazy. Right, what all right, is he doing in my Calm down. All right, you. What's the story? Well, it all began in England in the 1950s. In the 1950s in England, popular music was very boring. In fact, everything in England in the 1950s was very boring, but popular music was particularly boring. There were the MacGuffins. There was Nigel Papp. There was Jimmy Glimmer, the Wallacey Warbler. And there was Vera Pickles, the singing granny. A large frog. The Ruttles had been playing together from quite an early age. When they grew up, some people believe they changed the world. I think it's fair to say the Ruddles changed the world. The Ruddles completely changed the world as we know it today. The Ruddles did change the entire face of music um, throughout the world. Well, the Ruddles completely changed the world. I think the Ruddles absolutely changed the world. Absolutely, the uh, Ruddles changed the world. The Ruddles never changed their socks. I feel good, I feel good, I feel bad. Oh, I think the best thing was their, their asses. Their bums, as you call them in England. These are four young men in their prime wearing very tight trousers, and uh, it created, I think, the best music before ABBA. Hold my hand and I'll see you home. A lot of bands at the time were trying to sing like American boys, like American boy groups. Mm -hmm. The Rattles, I felt, were starting to sing like American girl groups. Essentially, at the beginning, they were black girls. Before I heard the Ruddles, I wanted to be a musician. And afterwards? I didn't anymore. Um, I shall be doing my new album probably starting next week. Um, I've been working very, very hard on the material for it. Mm -hmm. I'm probably writing better than I've ever written. and We're, we're terribly excited. And who is your favorite Ruddle? It's not about my album this year. Uh, no, actually, this is this is about the Ruttles. Ah. Well, there wasn't any real personal rivalry between the Ruttles and the Stones, really. I mean, it was... We, we were quite, you know, later on, we, you know, met each other. But, but even at the beginning, but people liked to make it like that, you know. We were, we were the South's answer to the Ruttles, and when we go to, we go to uh, Preston, we'd... Uh, People would boo us, you know, because we weren't from the north, like the Rattles were, 
or the South is very proud of us because they at least have got something to combat Russells with. I mean, the, the Ruddles took us through the latter part of the 60s. They literally took a generation by the hand and said, come, come, let's learn history. Let's learn the, tra let's take the tragical history tour. Let us, let us walk down Shabby Road together. Let us join up in Sergeant Rudder's band. And uh, I don't know where we would have been without them. 23 years ago today, well, well, not today, I mean, more like 23 years and a bit. Actually, sort of depends when you watch this. But anyway, about a quarter of a century ago, I came here to this very spot in front of the plaza in New York to make a documentary about the Ruttles. I'm actually standing outside the actual hotel in which the Ruttles actually stayed in 1964. Actually, in this room here. And it was actually inside this actual room 13 years before the 23 years before, so that's like uh, 30, 36 years ago, about 30 years ago today. They, no, well, not today, uh, then, when it was 30 years ago, they stayed here in the plaza uh, when they first took New York City by storm. Look out! They're coming! They're coming! Woo! It's Reynolds Day! It's Reynolds Day in Flushing, and this is Bill Murray the K coming to you out of the WC. And right now, nobody wants to know anything but when are the Reynolds going to be here? They've just flown in, they've landed. They're in! They're in! Reynolds Day has arrived! They've arrived at Kennedy Airport! Wonderful to be here. Did you have a good flight? Wonderful yeah. flight. Yeah, Arms are a bit tired. <laughs> Why do you wear tight trousers? Well, Keep your legs warm. Can't hear you. Shut up a minute. Shut up. The Ruttles invented rudeness. Shut up! Well, I think, you know, the Americans took a moment to get used to the Ruttles because America is very polite on the whole. And, and, um, and so these kind of yobs coming off the plane and being rude to everyone, they, they took a moment to get the point of that. They're here! What can I say? I'm going to put on my wig. Hold it! It's Reynolds wig time, ladies and gentlemen. That can mean only one thing. We want a record. Hold my hand. I've got a twisted rod! How about that then, eh? Yeah. Exactly. What's he saying? Bill Murray, the king! Listen. We want to meet the American girls! We're coming over to meet the American girls! Oh, 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 oh yeah! yeah. <laughs> Wait a second, I got an idea. I'm gonna say a word. I'm gonna say a word, and I want you people out there to react to whatever it is. What do you say when I say the word? Dirt! Gotta go now, because I gotta sleep. Okay? I've always been a big fan of Dirks, and I always had kind of a crush on him. How about Nasty? I had floor-to-ceiling pictures of of Nasty, and I had his picture on my pillowcase, and it would I would lick it or kiss it and cry with it before I would go to sleep. Yeah, dig it, baby! What about a guy named Sting? How come you never say anything? Oh, he's, he's the, the quiet, quiet one. one. <laughs> yeah, he's the quiet one. He's a dark horse, he is. I was very, very fond of Stig. Liked him the best because he, you know, I loved the way he played. I loved his length. Excuse me. His length. All right, the rattles, the rattles. What? What do you, what do you mean? What, what? What word could I possibly have forgotten? I, I said, I said Dirk. I, I said nasty, and I said stink. You don't mean Barry, do you? You start off loving Barry, especially when you're young, because there's just something funny about him. You know, he was the funny drummer. Oh my God, Barry. Not a good-looking man, and yet the women were screaming. I was hoping when I got to be of age and got out behind my mother's apron strings that I could sleep with some of them as soon as I could. I think it's the kind of thing that rightfully should have been kept off The Ed Solomon Show. Ladies and gentlemen, the rebel, the Shoot me down in flames if I should tell a lie. Cross my heart, I promise that it's true. I've been in love so many times before But never with a girl like you With a girl like you To hold and be beside With a girl like you To fill my heart with pride and joy 
lot of us got to see them for the first time when they came over and played the Ed Sullivan show. I saw the uh, the Ruddles' uh, uh, first appearance on the on the Ed Sullivan show. It was a cultural phenomenon. So. I saw them first, I think, on the Ed Sullivan show, and you know, I mean, I was captivated and just short of being turned on. I won't bring you any pain. I won't run around again. I thought, my gosh, I'm going to do most of my hair like that, and uh, that's what I did. And so through high school, I had this side of my hair like the Ruddles, and this side uh, was short because they didn't like long hair in uh, the school. So I would, you know, sit like this in school, but then outside of school, I would, I would look like that, and they would thought a lot of people thought I looked like dirt. But how did the Ruddles get to number one? Ron Nasty had been born in 1940 and raised by his uncle, a well-known Liverpool ventriloquist. Oh, was a pretty boy, then. He was a, a very sensitive boy whose only fault was violence. At the age of six, he blew up his local school. It was a cry for help, really, when you look at it truthfully. I mean, I mean, it's, it's quite common in, in young children, in boys particularly. It just, it's just, it's sheer high spirits, you know? At six? It's normal adolescent stuff. So how did he channel this aggression? Well, he took up the banjo. The banjo is the perfect instrument for the antisocial. Steve, you play the banjo. Yes, I do. Um, would you would you would you play something for us? Oh, sure, I'd be happy to. <laughs> I'm sorry, would you play a Ruttle tune for oh, us? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, he was always playing with his little banjo. It's day and night, strumming away. I mean, sometimes sometimes uh, locked in the bathroom, you know? It's just for hours, it's just playing with it, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes, I, I think you I You know, think rubbing you. away until he had something to show for it. Yes, yes. You know what young boys are like. I mean, they're constantly, constantly playing with it. Yes, I think we get your drift. Rub, 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 Yes, thank you. Rub, 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 Shut up. Rub, rub, At first, they couldn't decide on their name. They were the Silver Ruttles, the Ruts, the Tulls, the Sluts, even Alma Cogan, before finally becoming the Ruttles. Ron Nasty, an ex-banjo player of no fixed ability, Dirk McQuickley, a left-footed guitarist, Stig O'Hara, a very thin man, and Bannington Womble, or as he was better known, Barry Wong. The Ruttles were still very bad, and there was only one place they could play, and that was Hamburg. There was only one place they could play, and that was Hamburg. And that was Hamburg. And it was here in Hamburg that the Ruttles would discover leather, amphetamines and shaggy. Oh! Hamburg sowed the germs of their popularity. Indeed, one might almost say, sowed the Germans of their popularity. <laughs> <laughs> Astro Glide, a German photographer who took these shots, gave the Ruttles their mop-top haircuts and put them into leather trousers. Yes, I made them very, very tight leather trousers because, you know, you want to see, everybody wants to see their, um, how you say, uh, nudges. Talent? Yeah, the balls. Yeah, it's very... Uh, Disgusting? Yeah, exciting. You know, I mean, I hate to, you know, blow my own... Well, I wish I could, but um, I came up with the trousers, and, and they were very, very tight, and that was important because, you know, they had to wear something, but it's as if they weren't wearing anything. They played the rat keller in the heart of the ancient hooker district. Ancient hookers were everywhere. Hans Henke is a German rockologist who came from Hamburg who has studied the Ruttles and their effect on the world through his work as a rockologist. Yeah, yeah. I stop up, I stop up, I stop up, I stop up, I stop Stop, no, oh, Stuka. No, nein, nein, Stuka, Stupa. That was Hitler's original design for a plane called the Stupa, 
which was designed to drop large penises on the enemy. Screaming penises, the stupa, would fall from the sky, slapping penises. But they changed it to the stuka because they are afraid. Because Hitler only had one ball and Goring had no balls at all. But that was... Uh, Hans, what about the rottles? Oh, the Fräuleins. Well, crazy for them, yelling at them. Ich liebe dich, ich liebe dich, which sounds like I want dick. But no, it means I love you, I love you. And they love them more than just love they want to loving you how can i keep loving you thank you very much indeed for, for agreeing to talk to us today oh it's great to talk with you and uh, will the check clear uh, it'll be a small one from the bbc oh bbc very clear. i remember listening to them as a child uh, the the chicken has lips <laughs> we would hear your broadcast and the fox is in a nightgown i repeat the fox is in a nightgown you are crazy people. I wonder how you won the war with these strange riddles you're broadcasting. But yet the French blew up a train afterwards. <laughs> I remember my uncle said the fox is in a night gun and the train blew up. <laughs> yeah, you bad memories. So, with their haircuts and the trousers, the Ruttles returned home to the cavern. One day, a strange man with a pronounced limp hopped down the stairs into the cavern. He'd been asking a sailor for... Well, never mind what he was asking for, because the rest is history. The man who hopped down the stairs became Leggy, the legendary manager. You remember the cavern? There was only that one doorway, so when, the light, when somebody opened the door, the light came in. I saw this kind of dark apparition, strange apparition. Leggy was a strange man. Even in, even in profile, he was strange. Leggy would, at the beginning, would walk around saying, you know, the rattles are going to be bigger than Elvis, and, and he'd be laughed at, of course. He was laughed at a lot because of the way he walked anyway, so he walked into these meetings at a disadvantage. Um, and when he said, my band, the Ruttles, is going to be bigger than Elvis, they laughed all the hearty, more heartily. But he was right, of course. I kind of asked around all the roadies, you know, who this guy was, and they told me he was Leggy Mountbatten and he was going to manage the Ruttles and stuff. But everybody knew that um, he didn't really like music. So what did he really like? He loved the trousers. <laughs> I was amazed that they could sing in trousers so tight. They did sing high. When I get that beat, my music is complete. It was the trousers. I know it was the trousers. And I went out and I bought woman's extra small trousers. I mean, these are trousers that were meant for a little girl. They were, actually, they were pink. And I buttered my legs and I squeezed into these trousers so that you could just, nothing was left to the imagination. And uh, let's just say my love life improved dramatically several years after I put those trousers on. Ruttles were now legends. At the Lunchtime Achievement Awards, they met the Queen, who awarded them the MBE. Now she left you, and you feel so it must have been a great honour meeting the Queen. She's a lovely lady. Yes, just She'll be nice when she's finished. Stig, how did you feel? He felt very, very proud. And honoured. And he'd like to say hello to all his friends and pets at home. Yeah, he'd like to request Vera Lynn singing Far, Far Away. She doesn't sing Far, Far Away. She's she far did. too close. Well, it's a good idea. Lady Beth Mouse Paddler is the wife of the British ambassador. That's Minto. It's, uh, it's written Mouse Paddler, but it's pronounced Minto. It's an English thing. The Ruttles visited you here in 1964. Yes, that's right. I remember the occasion. Uh, Dreadful, horrible, lower working class boys with appalling accents. One could understand a word they said. What happened? Well, the evening with the ambassador was an absolute disaster. They came in very late, very drunk, staggered around, shagged the staff and left. The Ruttles? No, no, the ambassador. Oh, baby, let me be. Baby, set me free. I'm on my knees. The Ruttles were famous. Perhaps more famous than anyone ever before. They had reached the very barnacle of success. 
but the irony was they had now become prisoners. Prisoners of fame. The whole world was in love with the Ruttles, but they couldn't leave their hotel room. What are we going to do today? What? Ah! Hey, look who's in the cupboard! Everywhere they went, they were stalked by girls. Bloody hell. <laughs> hey, there's a couple of Jews here. Bloody hell. All right, she's coming. Yeah. They're everywhere, they're everywhere. They must be under the bloody hell. Hey, do you think there's one of me cornflakes? In Hollywood, the Ruttles rented this house in Benedict Canyon. Two girls hired a helicopter and leapt from it into their pool. So, what was it about the Ruttles that made them so successful? Was it the women? Or was it the trousers? Maybe it was their sense of humor. Or was it their hairstyles? Perhaps it was the Cold War. Maybe it was the Kennedys. What are you, what are you Maybe, doing? I'm doing a documentary on the Ruttles. But, but I'm doing a documentary on the Ruttles. Get your own idea. Well, but this is so, my idea. Well, get your own crew. This is my crew. So it was here where the Ruttles first began. What was it about the Ruttles that made them so... Maybe it was their trousers, or perhaps it was... What was it about the Ruttles that... This is my... Trousers! Drop it in the beach! Trousers! You shit! Get out, you jacky swine! What was it about the Ruttles you that made them so... so this... Maybe it was their sense of humour, or perhaps it was their... You gotta... What was it about the Ruttles that made them so successful? Maybe it was their trousers! Did you believe this guy? Or their hairstyles! Maybe it was... What was it about the Ruttles that made them so successful? Was, maybe it was massive. The shagging was the fuel. I think a lot of it was the shagging. The Ruttles is not all about shagging. It's not all about that. It's largely about that. The word rock and roll itself, after all, essentially means shagging. And, and, and so, of course, the Ruttles were all about shagging. That's what, what is this music about? Is it all music kind of about that? I mean, didn't Bach essentially want to get it done, so to speak? Didn't, uh, you know, Der Bingle there making all those records in the 30s, uh, Artie Shaw, I think it was all about what's happening after the show, you know? Carl Perkins and Elvis in the 50s, I think it's always been about let's dance and then let's dance, if you know what I mean. Uh, and I th I'm sure that when it did the Ruttles, there was, um, there was no doubt about it that at the, you were ready to have sex after you listen to some of their records. I mean, I even knew that when I was 10. There had always been girls, hundreds of them, but some were more permanent than others. Nasty had been married early, about 7.30, maybe a quarter to eight, and his Liverpool girlfriend, Corinthia, was pregnant at the time. But Nasty was constantly on tour. It was no recipe for a happy marriage. Somehow, Corinthia was always left behind. Barry was the next to be married to his childhood sweetheart, Brenda Loyola. The wedding arrangements were so secret that even Barry didn't show up. When they were married, she was at St. Bede's Church, Wigan, while Barry was on stage at the Scunthorpe Coliseum. Easy listening. I'm in that easy listening mode. Why don't we do it in the middle of the road? Why don't we do it in the middle of the road? Well, obviously because it's uncomfortable. Uh, you'll hurt your knees and she'll get her bottom scraped. And then again, it's cold. It's very difficult to maintain an erection. Well, uh, anywhere really, out in public. Uh, actually, even, even in the bedroom is kind of hard. But the point is that there's just too much traffic. There isn't any room to do it in the middle of the road. Take off your shoes, sit back, relax, Edu. Tell me what more can an old rocker do? Easy listening. Easy listening. Madonna's house. And we came here to ask Madonna the influences of the Ruttles on her music and what she thinks about the Ruttles and whether she loves and adores the Ruttles. But sadly, she sold the house and moved to London. 
We flew to Paris to ask Celine Dion what she thinks about rattle music, but she lives in Miami. So we flew to Puerto Rico to ask Jennifer Lopez about the influence of the ruttles on her music, but sadly, she's in New York. I'm in New York and it's tremendously exciting because I've actually bumped into Jennifer Lopez here on the street. Jennifer, apparently you live here. Is that right you live here? That's true, that's right. <laughs> well, this is so cool for me. I mean, I I've been trying to get hold of you to ask you about the Ruttles. Oh, I love the Ruttles. I love the Ruttles. No way! Yes, they're so cool. Because I, I think they must be a big influence on your music. Oh, definitely. They're one of the biggest influences. Oh, that is so exciting. I I'm just so thrilled. Thank you so much for agreeing to give us the time today. Oh, you're you're welcome anytime. So, from New York and Jennifer Lopez back to somewhere else. Golly. Oh, look, there's Madonna. Oh, my hand, yeah, yeah. Oh, my hand, yeah, yeah. Oh, my hand, and I see you home. The Ruttles were always innovators, perhaps never more so than when they released the Triangular album. When this triangular record came out, it, it, we, you couldn't you couldn't get enough of them. First of all, because they were, see because most records were round, and here, man, they were. This was triangular. And then when you put it on your your record player, and instead of this round thing just going around and around in a circle, you had this spinning triangle. I mean, we didn't even turn the we didn't even turn the volume up on the record player. We just looked at it spinning around. It was so great that it's never been. They, no one's even tried it since. You can't even touch it. No one's ever. No one else has put out a triangular record because the Ruddles did it. Period. Then I didn't do it first. They did it. Period. Yeah, that was really unusual when you went out and bought the album. You know, everybody was waiting in queues and went to rush to buy the album. And then when you pulled it out, it was triangular shaped. Everybody's like, wow, like, cool. But how did the Triangular album come about? Kevin Wongle was a record designer in London. You know, to actually get into a photo session with Ron and, and Stig and those guys, I mean, just floored me. I'm not gay or anything, but, you know, to be around these guys, I was totally starstruck. But anyway, I'll uh, just give you a little idea. This is um, one of the uh, mock-ups of the album, some ideas I had uh, for the shot. And uh, as you can see, this was actually taken out of a toilet bowl like looking up and they're all looking down at the toilet bowl. This one uh, was actually on the market for, um, I believe it was three months. And it was, a, it was selling well, but a lot of returns. Uh, because again, people um, were missing some of the songs. You know, it played part of the song and then the needle would fall off and it'd come back up again. Sorry, it's upside down. This um, jacket sleeve and, and with the album in there, um, it became dangerous. A lot of the kids were doing drugs at the time and they were chasing each other with with the album and some I believe were actually stabbed. This, this image of the boys looking down, as it spun around, we found later on, as it spun around, it almost looked like turds going down the toilet. The silver screen beckoned. The Ruttles came here to Hollywood. But it was here in Hollywood. Hollywood. And we're here at the Hollywood Bowl. And it was from here at the Hollywood Bowl, well, over there, that the Ruttles then went on to become movie stars. I loved a hard day's rut. I loved a hard day's rut. I loved a hard day's rut. That has influenced all of my work. That and uh, some of the stuff the Turtles did. 
<laughs> I remember when they all came out of the train and then uh, piled onto the tracks and tried to kill themselves. And when the train left, they almost got run over. That was hilarious. And then they all came. Then they, then they got out of the train. They watered down the train. You know what? I have a hard day's rut confused a little bit with Schindler's List right now. I'm a Hard Day's Rut was, uh, you know, it was not like an advertisement in a way. It was just existed or propaganda. It was there to, to uh, uh, celebrate these uh, four characters. The music's, you know, what it is, it'll always be legendary, and those guys will, but uh, uh, Hard Day's Rut was just like, you know, being with them uh, on a personal level. That was wonderful. I thought it was very, very funny. It was neat to see their, you know, their personalities really shining through. If anyone doesn't like A Hard Day's Rut, they, sh they should be beat. Oh, Jesus, I would pay money not to go and see a hard day. Wild horses couldn't have dragged me in to see that. I hated it. I hated it. Just how good were Ruttle films? Well, we flew all the way to New York to talk with legendary film director Mike Nichols about the Ruttle films. Mike, hello. Hello. Oh, you, you don't mind if I, if I call you Mike? No, no, no. Great, thanks. Um, um, thanks, by the way, for agreeing to talk to us about Rattle Films. Glad to do it. Um, Mike is one of the greatest film directors of all time in the entire world. Thank you. Uh, and one of my personal favorites. Thank you. I, I love your movies. I, I've seen all of them. I'm very glad. Um, if, if I can start, uh, if I may, with A Hard Day's Rut. Yes, the black and white one. Mm -hmm. um, Mike... You directed The Godfather, uh, which was always one of my favorite films, and I was wondering if... Are you kidding? No, I really liked it. I thought it was great. Oh, fuck this. What? You're breaking my heart. Ouch. I'm falling apart. Ouch. 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 When we first met, I must admit, I fell for you right from the start. Now when we meet all kinds of things, it seems upset the apple cart. I love Ouch. It's hilarious. The, uh, the funniest part to me in Ouch is when Dirk steps on the sticker, the little tiny thorn in his bare feet, and he yells, Ouch! <laughs> Ouch! Don't desert me! Ouch! Please don't hurt me. Ouch. 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 I heard a, a few bars of ouch from somebody's car as they were passing by. They had it on the radar. I just heard like three phrases. Uh, and I heard, well, literally, I heard ouch, 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 ouch as it was going by. And I uh, immediately went out and found that record, and I just started listening to that record uh, alone. And I listened to that record for straight for 17 weeks. Ouch. Don't desert me. Ouch. I thought the movies were fucking endless. The only one of the Ruttles films not to achieve success was the Tragical History Tour. In many ways, it was a disaster. Tell me what you think about this low-fat diet shampoo. Do you think it's crunchy, half crunchy, or not crunchy at all? Put a tick in the appropriate box, there's nothing to it. Yes, no, don't, no. Dirk will always say, it was the best, it was wonderful, and it's really, it all comes together. No, it's, uh, no, I'm sorry, Dirk, it's a mess. It's just a big mess. It was a mess. <laughs> I'm sitting in a dandelion den. 
Mexico. And we're here in Mexico because, well, we're actually here in Mexico because the travel agent uh, screwed up. He sent us via Cancun. You got a che cheaper deal on the, on the plane. It doesn't really matter why we're here. We're here in Mexico because it's here in Mexico that the Ruttles never played. They were supposed to come here, but they decided that San Francisco would be their final gig. San Francisco, everyone's favorite city by the gay bay. I'm standing at the very spot, well, over there was the very spot where the Ruttles played their last concert ever, in Candlestick Park, right there. Here, the legend came well, didn't come to an end, but was the beginning of beginning to come to an end, or maybe beginning to come to the middle of the of the, the legend, which would really, which would finally end uh, somewhere else. The Ruttles' last live appearance ever was actually out where I was in San Francisco at, at Candlestick Park, I think. Right. And um, 66. That was the big show. And I did have tickets to it, and then I traded to a friend of mine my two tickets to see the Ruttles for uh, 35 hits of acid. <laughs> now, this is a true story. That's <laughs> so I met the Ruttles in a different way. <laughs> had finished touring and now they threw themselves into the recording studio. When they emerged, they were very strangely dressed. My name is Joe Public, I'm sure you all know. They were also behaving very weirdly. The Ruttles were under the influence of tea. The resulting album was the classic Sergeant Rutter. On this very day, somewhere in another universe. I mean, you thought the world had changed when Sergeant Rutter came out, you know? I mean, I had a, you know, Leggy sent me a, um, an advanced copy of the tape. And I had the turtles. You remember the turtles? Um, they were at my apartment, and uh, I sat them down and I said, I've got this tape for you to hear. And I put Sergeant Rutter on my tape recorder. Well, you've never heard of the turtles since. As soon as I heard Sergeant Rutter, we all ran for the door. I had my trousers under my arm. I was out the window. Major Harry, Major Harry, Major Harry. I used to play that album over and over and over. Yeah. And did you like it? Oh, I, you know, I used it to fall asleep and uh, you know, help myself fall asleep. And it was, uh, it was great because you get into maybe one or two songs some nights. You can be completely wide awake and thinking, I am never going to fall asleep. And I would put on Sergeant Rutter and immediately I was out. The effects of Sergeant Rutter were interminable. Some people even believe there were messages hidden in the lyrics. The Ruttles always deny that they intended to have any message on their records, but I mean, we've all done this when we were, you know, kids. We all play back Sergeant Rudder and play back Dark Side of the Sun at the same time while you're watching The Wizard of Oz and while you're slightly high. And it's amazing how it all syncs up and it's an episode of Bonanza. Sergeant Rutter led to the summer of lunch. Oh, the summer of lunch when there was all that free food going around? Yeah, I got diseases. That was when I was really eating everything. You know, as the Ruttles say, all you need is lunch.
In June 1967, the Summer of Lunch came to a fitting climax with a live recording by the Ruttles on Worldwide TV. The love is sublime. The Love Life sessions were, you knew something was really happening. I mean, it was the first, I think, the first round the world, round the world thing, you know, where everybody around the world could hear the Ruddle singing Love Life and, and be a part of it. But I was actually really a part of it because we were all at the Shabby Road together, you know, in, you, you know, Studio Two there where you walk down that thing? Well, that wasn't the studio, it was actually Studio One where the big orchestra goes in. I was sitting right, right in front of Nasty. Mick was there, Keith was there. I mean, all the lads were there. Stig now discovered the meaning of life, right here at this Indian restaurant. It was curry. He studied transcendental mastication under Arthur Sultan, a former chef at this Shangri-La restaurant. I remember they went through that phase where they went to the Indian restaurant and they were eating curry and um, they found enlightenment and a higher power uh, for $8.95. Did you ever get the feeling that the truth is less revealing than a downright lie? Stig now invited the others to join Arthur Sultan for a weekend of curry in Bognor. When it came to curry, they were anxious not to miss the boat. Every day's a perfect day, and you can go your own sweet way in Shangri-La. In Shangri-La. In Shangri-La. You can be wherever you are in Shangri-La. With curry, the ruttles had grown almost too hot. Now, fate blew cold on their picnic lunch with the sudden and surprising loss of Leggy Mountbatten. With the ruttles growing and taking charge of most of their activities, he just slipped out of their lives. I'm a climber. Leggy had diverted into managing other groups and singers. Troy Nixon was Leggy's assistant. Lover. A companion. Hmm? Whatever. Leggy had quite a stable of young boys. Oh, yes, he, um, <laughs> he always loved attractive young men. Um, he always had his um, finger on the pulse of the young boys, yes. They all had strange names like uh, Wild, Damp, Thunder, Clap. He, he tended to name them after how they were in bed, you see. You know, um, like uh, Tommy Wild, Dickie Furious, Geoffrey Willing. Billy, is that it? How did he know what attracted teenage girls? Yeah, they had the same taste in boys. Had the Ruttles bubble burst? Not quite. But night had fallen on their Broadway. The loss of Leggy was a tremendous blow. For solace, the Ruttles turned to something stronger than a manager, their wives. Dirk met and fell in love with a young dog and its owner, Martini, an exotic model. Every time we meet, we say hi. How's it going? Fine, we reply. But I wonder what would happen if I could tell you. I love you. I love you. Nasty, meanwhile, visited an exhibition of broken art at the pretentious gallery Soho. Here, amidst the rubble of art which had been specially dropped from planes, he found the artist herself, Chastity, a simple German girl. It was lunch at first sight. Do you know there's this man in America who's done all this research into vegetables and peas, apparently, are very intelligent. They can read people's thoughts. So I thought I'd write a song saying, give peas a chance. Well, he took her everywhere. I mean, even the shower. Well, it, it, that was the beginning of shower power. The world is like a shower. 
it sort of uh, drips on people, you know, and it's supposed to get them clean, but really you're only clean from the inside. Isn't that what you said? That's what she said. Rattle's music will be remembered long after Mozart's paintings or Beethoven's after-dinner speeches have been forgotten. But what was it that drove the Ruttles apart? Well, was it their trousers, or maybe it was their sense of humour? Maybe it was the Cold War, or maybe it was the cold what, weather? Give me that. What, what are you doing? This is mine. No, this, this is mine. Is, I'm, I'm doing... making this down. This is my documentary. No, no, you tell me. Get it off. I'm stop who it you now. are. Who are you? Don't know who I am. Well, you should know who I am. Will you get away? You... For heaven's sake. Get off me. Get off me. You hurt me. You stupid rat. For God's sake. This hurling is so silly. What was it that drove the Ruttles apart? I don't know. It's a lot of things. I mean, I guess women, really. Women are a great divisive force in the Ruttles, I think. In a lot of bands. Not in ours, of course, but in the Ruttles, it was a big problem, I think. How can you be a rock and roll singer if you're married? It's, it's not possible. No, you have to have rock or roll, you know? It's a, you can't have both of them if you're married. As they broke up, they passed on to us the one great truism that I think all humanity can understand, that in the end, the lunch you make is equal to the lunch you take. And if you can abide by that, my friend, then you will never, ever say ouch. The breakup of the Ruttles is chronicled in their final film, Let It Rot. It's like watching a marriage fall apart. Only one moment enlivens the misery when the Ruttles play live together in public for the very last time on a London rooftop. were arrested. Let's go, man. Hey, get your hands going on. The end for the Ruttles came quite suddenly and unexpectedly. The Ruttles had made a tremendous impact. <laughs> Ow! The breakup was the nicest part of, of, of the, their entire career, I, I thought, you know. There was a sigh of relief throughout the business that maybe we could get back to, to, to inanity. And, and the, 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 the driving drumming that, that is the essential key sign of rock and roll, instead of all that complicated bullshit and bringing in orchestrators and video and all that nastiness, you know. I thought, well, they've broken up. Good idea. As a matter of fact, it was the best idea they had. That kind of populist music is, uh, won't last. It can't last. Too many people know it. 
everybody can sing it, everybody knows every word of every song, how can that possibly last? It's a, a, an ephemeral kind of uh, flotsam and jetsam, it's, uh, it's a nothing, it's small, it doesn't matter, it's uh, insignificant, it's of no consequence. Of course it'll fucking last. I will not do what the Ruddles did. I will not break up. Where would the world be without the Ruddles? Where would it be without Dirk and Nasty and, and Stig and Barry and all their shenanigans and all their whoop de doo and all their normal stuff and here we are, we're all lads from Liverpool. Where would we be without that? Where would we be? Could you think of any great uh, communist rock bands? No, I don't think so. There was nothing called the Village People's Republic, you know. There was no bands with two million uh, gay Chinese. <laughs> Here was a shining example of what it could be like. You could like go make music and make fun of everybody and get away with it. You know, it was, it was great. Really the crowning glory, I guess, to their, their, their career is this piece of marketing extravagance. What am I getting for this? Um, well, actually, the, the, your, 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 they did say that you, you'd, you'd be getting, you know, you would waive a fee. Right? I would waive a fee. Yes. Really, they told you that? That's what, that's what the office said, that you'd be waiving the fee. Wrap. I think we should just tell us... I can't do any more now. I've really, I've got to go. Oh, Could we just wrap it up? And uh, honestly, it's, it's not you. It's the whole crew. It's just too much. They're, they're trampling over oh, what's left of my... Honestly, they've killed my dog. I've got to finish up. And out you go. This please, is fantastic. But we, Say hello to all the people in England. Honestly, I've just, <laughs> i got to go. You know, I've got other things. I've got two other interviews to do. Bye-bye. 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 23 years ago today, right here in front of the plaza, New York, was where this documentary all began. Why? Here was... Why are you doing this to me? I'll tell you why. 23 years ago, here, I, actually, here, 23 years ago, and here, and over here, twice, you met my mother. Big Wendy. Dad! <laughs> I don't believe it! I don't believe it! Oh my God. Oh my God. Many years from now, when your grandchildren climb up on your knees, you may be quite astonished to see How many channels they can change on TV When some old film in black and white Comes on and there you are up on the screen Or is it someone just like someone you've been Looking not to Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> and what action am I doing now? <laughs> 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 Don't worry. Start the thought again. <laughs> the, the songs. Did you like the songs? No. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so shameless. So shameless. It's hard because I'm not a good um, comedian. Not comedian. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wonderful comedian, and you're very good. Okay.